Hello, and welcome back to our regularly scheduled Capcom Arcade Classics Collection. Today's game is none other than... How long can the intro go? Okay, this game wins. It's 1984. Just kidding. Although it is always kind of funny. As a, as a kid, I was like, 1942? Why would they call the game 1942? They made the game in 1984. Why isn't it 1984? But it's 1942, which is funny because then they released 1943 and then they released 1941. It It's all sorts of inconsistent. Anyway, uh, what we have here is a fairly standard. Oh, cool. So let's see. In the lower right hand corner, we've got our loop de loops and you can loop de loop. That's right. Is that back in the days before bombs were invented, people were like, oh, well, we should invent something that makes the player character invincible, but let's not make it a bomb. Let's make it a loop-de-loop -loop instead, because, of course, dive bombers in World War II did loop-de-loops all over the place, right? Well, <laughs> I was going to say they made history, but they really kind of didn't. No other, no other series other than the last 32 stages, holy cow. Although it's kind of funny, lower right-hand corner, usually it shows you what stage you're on, how many stages to go. But I guess they figure that because this game tells you anyway, then um, it they don't need they don't need to be the ones who tell you. So we are, of course, doing the super score mode. And, ooh, 56%. I thought it was going to be something more embarrassing. Oh, today's top, 30%. <laughs> I mean, overall, it's pretty embarrassing. Okay, 70k and we got 4k. What a ways to go. What a ways to go. Actually, one interesting thing about this game is that I already played it on this channel. I think I even played the arcade release, although now that I think about... Oh, weird. You can only go so far back on the screen. Yes, this, this is as far back as you can go. Is there a limit to how high? <laughs> they only let you go three quarters of the screen up. They're like, hey, man, we want you to be a daredevil, but not that much of a daredevil. Although, actually, now that I think about it, I can't remember if I played the arcade version or the Nintendo version. You know, it could have been the Nintendo version. That could have been like the start of Ashbrack Cats. Let's play that. <laughs> a now discontinued series where I used to play random... Uh, not arcade games, but random uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color. I think that's all. <laughs> I mean, you might have said it was a little scattered, but I mean, come on. If the game system itself wasn't also random or didn't feel like it was randomly chosen, then what would be the point, right? What would be the point? Well... We are in a shoot 'em up. It is inter. Well, okay. For one thing that's kind of weird about this game is I'm actually almost tempted to use the non auto fire fire. I mean, again, like there's only so many planes, so it's not like you constantly have to have auto fire on all the time. Plus, this is one of those shoot 'em ups where you only have a limited number of shots you can have on the screen at once. So, well, it's more important to make them count than it is to put them out. Oh dead already really okay so yeah not so bad although it is kind of strange looking at one of these capcom shoot 'em ups because they played volgus or they put out volgus and so volgus is like their first shoot 'em up not the first shoot 'em up although sometimes it feels like it but then they went to this game and like on one hand this game is more annoying to play because i don't know if you've noticed but it's a lot harder but at the same time, it probably made Capcom a lot of money. What, 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 oh, no, that, that, I made 25 grand just by, that didn't, I mean, it felt like I played the exact same as I did before, but this time I'm cracking the, the, the quintuple digits. Like, this is, okay. It's also weird because like there's no there's no sense of progress. I mean, yeah, the game tells you what stage you're in, but if it wasn't for that, there'd be no way to tell. I mean, yeah, you could like lie and say, oh, but you can identify where you are through the vague landmarks in the back and use your knowledge of the Pacific War to kind of triangulate where you are. But no, you you really can't. I don't think they're recognizable as anything. And even if they were, there are a lot of nondescript tiny islands in the Pacific. 
that's kind of what the whole Pacific War was fought over. Hmm. So you can't you can't go to the f top of the screen. It's funny because prior to Volgus, I I never would have thought to do that. But now that I see these Capcom games and I'm trying to pick up on their tricks, I'm starting to see that like top of the screen is actually a surprisingly viable place to be. Because I mean, I never noticed this as a kid or even as a person three years younger than I am now, but the enemy planes like, yes, they all come from the sides of the screen, but they all come from the middle of the screen. So actually, if you were to stand like towards the very top of the screen, you'd be in a surprisingly powerful position or surprisingly safe anyway. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do planes come into the into the screen at whatever level you're at? I don't think that's entirely true, but I do think if you are towards the top of the screen, then they come in towards the top. I mean, of course, if you're at the bottom of the screen, they don't ambush you on the sides. I mean, Capcom, they they may occasionally make the blunderous, vaguely mischievous misstep, but like, they're not that bad. But, huh. Oh my gosh. And then those big planes come and ambushing you from behind. Also, the fact that, like, you collect these POW things and, like, well, unlike Volgus, where POWs were just cannon shots that, like, I mean, yes, more cannon shots is good, but how much more? How much good? I don't know. But this game, like, you get a POW. It's, like, it's the difference between tearing your hair out at being unable to, like, kill anything versus killing everything so quick you start getting that brief feeling of invincibility of course and then something ambushes you from behind jeez louise can you guys stop doing that just a little please just a little i'm not asking for much maybe just like an entire game's worth of not ambushing me from behind well 27k we have effortlessly <laughs> beaten our last score not that it feels like it because i mean again we're fighting the same enemies with the same weapons in roughly the same place and it's the same gameplay. That is kind of one weird thing about these sort of early arcade games where like they really did not distinguish the gameplay so much. Well, I say that and yet Higamaru, I mean, that one actually distinguished its games quite a bit or levels quite a bit. And I'm not just saying that because of the color, although the color really does help. No, because you get to the high point round and it's this kind of like, it has this definite feel. It's just you and the good pirates. Can you beat them? Who knows? This is a test of skill. Also, there's high point items to get. And then you go back to the regular stage, and it's like, oh, it's filled with tons of lame pirates. Can you fight boredom as you defeat them all? But then you get five stages in, and then it's like, it's this weird grid pattern that looks more like a Bomberman game than an actual Higamaru map. And, like, that one is actually pretty tough, because... The pirates go on corners, or they turn on corners, and if there's a lot of corners, there's a lot of pirate turning, there's a lot of unpredictability, there's a lot of them ambushing you. Or is this game? I don't know. I mean, I'd say they ambush you, but I feel like this game is almost more about finding the safe spots. It's weird because, like, almost the exact middle of the screen seems to be that safe spot. I mean, what other shoot 'em up can you just hang out in the middle of the screen? I mean, you play something like Iron... Ironclad, that's right. I mean, I just played it, and it was already so forgettable. I can't even remember its name. But it's like that one. If you try hanging out in the middle of the... Well, I, I got distracted by the pal. How's that for an excuse? But in Ironclad, like, you hang out in the middle of the screen, and then the boss just, like, immediately sucker punches you. No no wind-up, no build-up, no muss, no fuss, just you looking at your exploded ship. I mean, that one gave you, like, five hit points, so I guess it was ultimately, like, forgivable, but it was kind of annoying. Whereas this game, well, I guess three is a fair amount of lives to have. Yeah, this this loop de loop is <laughs> it's very interesting how like non advantageous it is for you because I mean I don't know if you noticed but like you can't actually move whenever you activate it. Now it is of course preferable to instant death, but it almost feels like you're trading away instant death for an eventual death. 
Shooting down 85%. And we're right back. Oh my gosh. That was a stage. We have how many? We have 31 more stages to go. <laughs> That's a lot of stages. I don't think we're going to see the end. I say that like we saw the end of all the other arcade games. Well, we did see the end of our playing them at least. And... Hmm. Let's see. So when you shoot the shots, okay. So when your shots hit a plane, they disappear. Now that sounds obvious, but here we've got our super wide shot. And even when the super wide shot just barely grazes a plane just out of the very corner. Oh, you don't get double pow? Man, this game, no breaks. But even if your wide shot, just the very... I mean, I guess I should have seen that coming, but fine. I will stay in the middle of the screen like a good observer person. Oh, I see now why I chose the back of the screen. Because, yeah, you get those big guys shooting at you. And the planes aren't so fast, but their shots are pretty fast. Actually, yeah, why are the why are the boss's shots like just three times faster than regular planes? That's kind of weird. <clears throat> It's, it's kind of embarrassing because these like individual planes of shots are not that fast. Now the boss, I mean, yeah, it's fast, but like <laughs> to say it's highly telegraphed is like <laughs> quite the understatement. I just realized uh, in this game, it shows you a little metal if you beat your high score. I, I feel like that's not entirely consistent, but if you're just following along at home, you can see if I did better than last time. The answer is usually yes, but... You never know, eventually I reach that cap when... Anyway, eventually I reach that cap where I just am not seemingly improving anymore. Hopefully, I won't reach that anytime soon, but... Well, that's off to a great start. Huh. It's weird, because, like, yeah, you want to shoot everything, but in order to shoot everything, you got to give yourself more time. So you got to work your way back to the back of the screen. But if you hang out at the back of the screen, then they're going to ambush you with the big ships or big planes. And I mean, yeah, maybe you could just memorize when the big ships come. But that's like, I feel like that's way more games of 1942. It's going to take me to do that. I don't want to do that. See, I just got completely ambushed by this guy. Wow, their shots are faster than the enemy planes. This is ridiculous. And yet, oh man, oh man, oh man. I wonder if that big boss only counts as like one enemy for the purposes of the enemy kill percentage. I mean, I guess it has to, right? Like, you, you can't just arbitrarily count it as like three ships, but it does seem kind of unfair. I guess you get a point bonus for it, but if it doesn't show you the point bonus, then, like, does it even really count? So now, now that I have played Volgus and I have that to compare this game to, I'm kind of curious, like, what, what overlap in teams are there between the two, well, games, I guess? Because on one hand, like, Cap Capcom puts out, like, what, four or five arcade games a year in their early years? I mean, is Capcom Arcade's collect classics collection is like what 30 games which doesn't seem like a lot but that's probably a pretty decent percentage of their catalog or at least certainly if you just look at the ones up to 90 then it's probably a pretty decent collection but like there's a lot of things that volgus has that this game really doesn't now volgus i've come to realize in retrospect was almost like a galaga game and so it, it kind of plays more towards the aesthetics and gameplay loops of Galaga than anything else. Actually, that that does kind of beg the question, what do you compare this game to? Because I look at this game and I think, oh yeah, it's, it's your standard shoot 'em up like Raiden or Arrow Fighters or whatever, where you're just the ship just kind of flying along, killing endless enemies, trying to make forward progress. But if you think about it, like, there has to be a first game like that. And, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what game that would be. Because, I mean, it's not Space Invaders. Because Space Invaders, I mean, well, that's, that's a different game from basically any other shoot 'em up It's not like Galaga, because, like, Galaga, I mean, yeah, you're, you're making stages, but your progress isn't literally conceived as forward progress through a scrolling map. It does make me wonder, then, like, how, how many people were shared? Because this does seem pretty innovative. So it kind of makes me wonder if this was like a completely new 
set of people? Or maybe they're like, okay, guys, we made an arcade hit with Volgus. Let's let's see what our B team can do. It's like, oh, you've got a cool idea for a World War II themed fighter? Shoot him up? Sure, let's do it. What are these enemy patterns? It's it's funny because like it gives me the same enemy pattern in a row. So like it feels like I should be getting better, but I don't think I am. Okay, let's let's test myself. Uh am I right about the metals showing up? <laughs> Man, today's top is only 30%. <laughs> I'm winning it every time. I guess I was right. Huh. It doesn't quite seem like it, because maybe just because I've been playing so many <laughs> of these new games that, like, I'm getting all these high scores left and right, that now I'm sort of suddenly, like, spoiled for high scores. Hmm. You know, okay. No. Indecision. What I was going to do... Well, okay, so I have the controls mapped where the first button... The first button is auto fire, the second button is regular fire, and the third button is the quote unquote bomb, but it's actually the loop the loop. So I was debating switching to having the normal fire be the first button, and then the loop the loop be the second button, and to trade away flexibility in terms of action for mental ease of use. Speaking of mental ease of use, I'm always surprised at how I'm able to talk and like all this stuff happening. But anyway, no, I thought better about it because I don't know. Maybe you want auto fire like this guy. Maybe <sighs> it still feels like I can shoot faster with the other one. Well, OK, that's the thing about auto fire. Oh, OK, so I'm doing auto fire right now. That's so weird because with the other one, like you can you can press the button faster than you can shoot regular shots in auto fire. Maybe that's just because they made the executive decision to slow down your auto fire so you'd have a constant um, stream of attack. But the thing is, they structured the entire game where the enemies are coming at you in like like little dense clusters. So that's that's really not the way you want things to be. You know what? Let's try that. Let's try that. So showing off this okay well let's not think about things too much and then oh 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 okay this is b this is x no 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 this is x no this is y <laughs> okay and then i've got auto fire just hanging around sure let's try this oh cool how to play huh I've never... Oh, I was looking for the page two of how to play, but it's 1942. I mean, come on. There's really only one way to play. Okay. So now let's pretend like we're back in the arcade. I don't know. Maybe this will get me to use the loop-de-loops a little more often. Well, so using bombs in these sort of shoot 'em ups is always, like, an interesting proposition because... Um, you only get so many of them. You don't want to become reliant on them. But also, there's a delay. And so, in order to use a bomb, you have to almost consciously make the decision that, like, things are going bad. But, and, like, bad enough that you're pretty sure you're going to die unless you use up one of your precious resources to resolve the situation. But not bad enough that you're instantly dead. Or, or but... But, like, still bad enough that you can't just, like, wiggle wiggle dodge your way out of things. Like, there, I was able to see the big ship trying to ambush me out of the corner of my eye, but, like, in normal circumstances, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's, it saved me. It's, it's weird. Only having two buttons instead of three, you'd, you'd think it wouldn't really make a big difference, but... It's all about that split second, because you saw that split second without paying attention and I would have been destroyed by that shot but I was able to loop to loop in time whoa yeah I guess loop to looping in this game is not it's not really cheap because like you're kind of stuck in place so you really need to be no you really need to be knowing what you're doing otherwise loop to looping is just a quick way of killing yourself later plus it's not like you you get a lot of loop to loops I think they replenish each life Oh, do you think they replenish with the ship, too? 
that does seem unusually generous for a game that Capcom like clearly designed in such a way to like punish you. Oh no. Well, never mind. Okay, loop to loops. I'd say I can finally see that 70k score in sight, but I don't know. I feel like I've been playing a fair bit better and I'm only at 20k. I want to say I at least got 40k without thinking about it like a few minutes ago, so I don't know. 70k. Do I think I can make it? And here I was thinking I would just be like, oh, but 1942, I already played that game. Let's kind of mess around by setting it to like super fast and just playing that version instead. But no, this score round, it's just, I picked up a pal and now what is, what is this nonsense? I picked up a pal, but I don't have the wide shot. I have a fast shot. Are there different pals? Like, and how to play. Does it explain that? Fire shot. Loop to loop. <laughs> I, I like it. It's like, your loop to loop can only be performed a limited number of times. Try to try to save them. It's like, thanks, game. Thanks, game. Well, if there are two different um, version, versions of POWs, then, like, they really should have explained that in how to play. Otherwise, why even have the how to play? I think I'll just go back to ignoring that. It is kind of interesting, like, <laughs> how as I've been doing this series, I've been learning, like, more and more little nooks and crannies about this game collection. And, like, there's some stuff that, well, okay, I was going to say I took for granted that, like, changed my mind. No, it's, it, admittedly, it's all a bunch of small little stuff, but small little stuff adds up after a while, and ultimately... What? What? <laughs> what? I thought this was a simple game, but I guess it's not? <laughs> I don't understand. Capcom, what is your game fo design philosophy? Is it just to, like, th throw a bunch of stuff into your games? Like, do they intentionally make their games to be, like, weirdly abusicated in, like, small, semi-inconsequential ways? You can at least pretend that you heard me. Loop to loop in time. Okay, I'm almost getting a little tilted. Usually, I've got I've got it by now. I didn't even get a high score that time. All right. You've seen me at my worst. Now see me at my best. Or so I'd like to believe. So what? You thought me playing at my best would, <laughs> would mean I'd be quiet? <laughs> You're not getting rid of me that easily. No, I find that I can... I can talk pretty well, even when I don't have to focus on this. Although, well, it, it might not help me dodge shots. It might not help me focus into the game, but it sure helps pass the time away. Well, I mean, I've got to focus a little bit less on what I'm saying. And so we're now in the patented stream of consciousness part of the show. What will I say? I don't even know. Sometimes I listen to the recordings and it's like, oh, geez, did I say that? <laughs> Sometimes it's a nice little zingy one liner. OK, this is well, I was going to say this is getting out of hand, but it's actually very, very manageable. I don't know this game. Like once once you've seen it a few times, once you kind of pick up the techniques and once you figure out like where to be on the screen. OK. Maybe, maybe I don't have this game quite as figured out as I would have liked to think, but it's strange because you can like kind of get good at this game, but you also kind of can't because it is like the game is clearly stacked against you. Like you do have to be good at this game to make forward progress. This isn't like Volgus or Higamaru where you can just kind of bumble and stumble your way through this game. This is almost the beginning of, like, arcade games that are actually kind of hard. Like, con in intentionally conceived of as hard. Because you play a game like Galaga, and I mean, or Pac-Man, and I mean, yeah, there are elements of difficulty to it, but it's not like the game was specifically designed to be unfair or even to steal your credits or anything. It was just more like, well, here's how a game should go. But you have this game, and it's like, I believe the enemies are faster than you. They fill the screen with bullets. Well, okay. That's a little of a little bit of an exaggeration, but they're not shy about shooting off their shots. 
I guess the game does give you the loop de loop, but like the thing about the loop de loop is, yeah, you, you have to mentally like you can't just instantly loop de loop your way out of danger. It takes like half a second to be able to actually trigger the loop de loop, but then you get into that familiar shoot 'em up mental mental tussle, mental battle, where you have to like actually commit to using the bomb. Well, I don't know, maybe I'm just too reluctant to use bombs. I just wanna go it the right way and not do any bombs and just fight my way through everything like a, like a fair person, but maybe you just need the bombs. All right, all right, let's try that. I've, I'm desperate enough that I'll, I'll try whatever at this point. I gotta get that 70K, otherwise, well, I don't even want to think about what'll happen. <laughs> it's not like anything will happen. I don't know. But sometimes self-imposed challenges are the ones you want to meet the most. Okay, I guess maybe I could think about what kind of routing should we do for this game. Because it feels like you want to stay in the middle and have that be your sort of neutral stance. And like you want to fight your way back to the middle. Now you need a little bit of extra time to shoot every single fighter that's coming at you yeah okay return back to the middle but once you're done with that go back to the middle that's interesting so okay fighters come at you but fighters come at you from the sides of the screen so what that means is if you want to actually shoot everything that's coming at you you're gonna have to swing from left and right however they do travel in sort of a diagonal pattern and so if you're willing to hang out at the bottom of the screen, you're able to shoot everybody with sort of a minimum of moving left and right. So it's almost like the game itself is kind of designed to funnel you towards the back of the screen. But once you're in the back of the screen, that's when they ambush you with like the big ships coming in from the back. And so it's it's interesting, this game. <laughs> I said I was going to use bombs more. I guess I used one bomb, but... Do you get points for bombs? Probably not. <laughs> Why would Capcom be that generous? But it's kind of interesting, like, working through the game's design and thinking, oh, so you can't move up or down when you're doing a loop-de-loop, -loop, but you can move side to side, which I suppose that's sufficient. But it's like the entire game is intended to get you to move behind. Okay. So far, I've been trying to chase down every every last shot or ship to get every last shot in. But you know what? Let's let's let bygones be bygones. If a ship passes by me, then we don't want to give up our position in the center just just to shoot them down. I don't know. Does that make life easier, harder? I mean, certainly you protect yourself against the big ships a bit better, but huh? It does almost seem a bit safer. And especially, too, because if you chase down every single last ship coming at you, like I did just there, then it's just not its not going to work out well for you. Huh. So you get fresh loop-de-loops every single time you clear a stage. It feels like stages aren't... Well, okay. Assuming the stage length keeps up for the rest of the game. It feels like stages aren't quite so far away. So maybe you are kind of encouraged to use your loop-de-loops like a little bit more graciously. And so, okay, you get like three loop-de-loops per stage, as the game gleefully keeps reminding me. There are 30-some-odd stages. So that all in all, that's like, what, 90 loop-de-loops? Each loop-de-loop -loop takes like, what, quarter of a second? So if you play your cards right, if you make it to the end, then you could have, you could have spent like, I don't know, maybe a 20th of the game like completely invincible. It's weird when you think about it like that. Well, okay, here's here's a weird percentage. <laughs> what percent do you think that people spend, like, not working? Like, what percent do, you, do they get time off? The percentage actually sounds pretty large when you think about it, because it's basically one-seventh. Or no, it's basically two-sevenths. <laughs> Why? Weekends. Most people get weekends off. <laughs> it's one of those funny facts that kind of blew my mind when I heard it, but then I heard the reasoning, and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <sighs> and here I was thinking I was finally getting good at arcade games. I'm like beating these first two arcade games. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe after all these years, I'm good at arcade games finally. But nope, 
here comes 1942 to just knock me down a peg. Now, okay, maybe this game is just exceptionally difficult, is what I can say to myself to reassure myself, but I don't know. There's, there's just something about this game that, like, yeah, it's a little more difficult than average, but I just can't convince myself that it's drastically more difficult than average. Oh, interesting. So the ships actually reverse what side of the screen they're on when they do their U-turns there. I guess they're doing loops to loops of their own. And so, huh. I could even just hang out on, like, for, for example, the left-hand side of the screen and just, as long as I shoot everything that comes on that left side of the screen, then I'll be able to get away with it. 1942, the thinking man shoot him up. Well, I'll say this. I mean, compared to Volgus, like Volgus, I mean, it pretty much laid all of its cards on the table. I mean, yeah, sure, they, they varied up shots and enemies and whatever, but like you pretty much knew what you were getting into, whereas this game, it's like it's it's coaxing you, it's challenging you, it's taunting you. It's like, can you can you get better at me? By the way, it has not lost on me that I believe I've been getting lower <laughs> scores for like the past three games. Because it feels like every time I check my score, then it's getting lower and lower and lower whenever I check it. And it's like, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> Especially if I'm going to be getting the 70k. I mean, <laughs> the score's got to be going the other way if I want to get there. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll admit defeat. Or maybe I just need to chill and like defeat a few more big ships because you get like 2k in that. And yeah, that's that's a way to turn the tides. Oh, I guess also your shooting down percent kind of boosts up your score. But I, I swear, like the past few times, I've always been breaking 20k when I got to this place. Maybe it's because I'm playing a little bit safer. Hmm. It's almost like a lot of tiny things added up. Oh, they, they don't do the stupid U-turns anymore. <laughs> they just go straight, which I guess if you think about it is arguably more dangerous for you because then like it's less time they're spending on screen. But still. Huh. I don't know. Is it is it better then to play it a little riskier and like pick up points faster? I mean, it's it's a little riskier, but it's not like a ton riskier. Well, I don't know. And of course, after this, if tradition holds, I'll play this game a few more times, just like I played Higamaru and uh, the other one, Volgus and. I don't know, maybe I'll learn its secrets and maybe it's just easier to play a game when you don't have to talk. <laughs> you know what they say, the camera subtracts half your score. Still though, there's there's a certain joy to be had with the camera on. And if nothing else, it at least forces you to actually play the game and interact with the game. I don't know, it's weird because like you'd think the camera would be distracting me and it is to be sure. But it's also forcing me to actually play the game because, I mean, I've I've been a kid on my own and I've played these various arcade collections, not this one, because obviously it wasn't released when I was a kid. But like, for example, Namco Arcade Collection. And it's like, yeah, I'd have played my favorites. I'd have played Galaga. But past that, I didn't really spend a bunch of time with all those other games. I just kind of choose my favorites, get in a groove, get in a rut, and then eventually give up the game and, I don't know, play Super Mario or something. And it's it's interesting having to actually like contend with each game individually, meet it on its own merits, and then try to beat it at its own game. Of course, pretty sure 1942 was playing with a loaded deck, but I still feel like I could beat it. Well, hope springs eternal, but I think I'm gonna set a new score. The only catch is, will it be north or south of 70k? It's kind of funny. It's like one one score in the world matters: 70k or bust. <laughs> And the best part is, it's like, that's just the bare minimum required to get your score on the arcade leaderboards. I mean, you want to get, <laughs> you want to like earn actual bragging rights. You're going to have to actually earn a superhuman score. But still, changing the goalposts like that, it it is kind of nice. Because then it's like, okay, yeah, 70k. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh, those are good. <laughs> okay, I was... okay, wow. Okay, wow. 
that was pretty extreme. Did you see those guys? They came in from like, they didn't even come from the side because like every other ship comes from the side. They just like came straight from the front. And so it was like doubly jarring because you just know this game is going to start ambushing you with front enemies sooner or later. And <laughs> I wonder if they did any focus testing on that before in the arcades. I wonder if like everybody ever in the arcades their first time is just has the bejesus scared out of them when they first get their options. Okay, 5k. Oh, oh, okay. I've already beat 70k. Your regularly scheduled podcast can now be resumed. So anyway, as I walked outside my door today, I was shocked to see. Actually, it's a trick question. I have not left my house in, I'd say months, but I mean, every now and again, you get a package that's delivered to your mailbox and not the front of your door. And it's like, come on, come on. Wait, I shot down 300. Is that the whole percent or I think that was the whole percent because otherwise I don't think there were 300 in that stage. Nice. Nice. Now I can submit my score. Where is he going to place? <laughs> Bare minimum. <laughs> I like how all the other times it's like 70k, but it's like now that I actually got 70k, it's like, well, your score has to meet a certain minimum threshold. And it's like, don't play coy with me game. I, I beat that minimum threshold and I exceeded that minimum threshold. By a trivial amount, but... All right, well, I kept this in my back pocket because... Oh, this isn't the game settings. Game settings. Well, I kept this in the back pocket, but... Ooh, you can even choose very fast. Well, why have restraint when you're showing no restraint? All right, let's... Let's play one round of super fast. Um, 1942, and we'll see how this plays. Oh, wow. Huh. Because, I mean, yeah, this setting is called very fast, but, like... Speed wise, it doesn't seem too far off from like every other shoot 'em up ever. I wonder if you can change game settings as you're playing. <laughs> no, that's a little silly. Why would you want that? Okay, I think after this, I'll change it to like just regular fast and then see how bad it is because this is this is almost doable. Okay, and then you get to the actual hard parts and you just like instantly lose. Huh. I'd say the game is more balanced, but like it's kind of the same though. It's just now it becomes more of a game of reflexes rather than a game of thinking. But even then, like, I don't know. It's, it's almost more fun though with the reflexes. Oh, cool. So you can even. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's a timer. Of course, it's funny because the timer itself is also sped up. Uh, don't I get some Caspo for that? Nah, it's the game's broken me. Now I'm, now I just want like my sweet Caspo reward for anything I do. Okay. All right, now let's try just regular fast. Is this just the same speed as every other shoot 'em up ever? I mean, on one hand, I'm tempted to say the old version is like way too slow, but now that I've actually tried playing for score, then old version is actually a pleasing, a pleasing speed, I would say. Anything more is just a little bit silly. Huh. Okay. Man, one thing I'm not entirely looking forward to is Captain Commando. I already played that, and I've played all these beat-em-ups, but I've got to play the beat-em-up for score, right? Oh, maybe I'll play for score, set it to fast, and then play that instead. Well, because, I mean, beat-ups are nice, but after a while, it's just the same thing over and over. And if they're easy, then it's just, it's mind-numbing. And if they're hard, then it's clearly stacked against you, and it's an unfair game, and you shouldn't even be playing in the first place. And so I was like, what are you going to do? But, well, that'll be part of the fun, figuring out how to make your own fun. Now, I mean, yeah, ideally the game designers would make each game fun, but, well, sometimes you got to augment them. Oh, nice. So you can... <laughs> Volgus, Sun, Sun, Higamaru, X to X's. <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, I guess you could continue, but why? Why? It's interesting. Like, the most fun way to play these Capcom arcade games is try to do store, score challenge and see if can you meet the minimum score for all the games. It's it's set at a level that's like, I don't know. It's, it's just high enough that for like a medium skill player, it takes a bit of work. As you've seen, it consistently takes, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes worth of effort trying learning the game and then you too can set a high score and it's like it's it's set in an interesting level because i mean on one hand okay yeah like it's it's great if you're just doing this sort of world tour where you're just playing every single you're trying well we might as well get to the actual game itself if you're doing like some sort of tourism where you're trying to like see every game see what each game has to offer see if like you you can meet the game's minimum standards and quality but at the same time, for like a longer challenge or for a longer term playtime potential, how is that going to work out? Because, I mean, once you meet that minimum score, I guess you can play and try to beat your own score. But I mean, beat your own score. That's it's sometimes satisfying, but it's ultimately a little lonely. It's way more fun to like have your friend set a score and be like, oh, man, I could I could beat your score with my eyes closed. And then you beat the score and you're like, oh, yeah. But your friend's like, oh, but you didn't have your eyes closed. And you're like, doesn't matter. I beat your score. Beat it or beat it or be a loser. <laughs> and then ultimately one of you gives up because you just don't have enough time to beat the other guy's score. And then. Well, eventually bygones become bygones and nobody remembers <laughs> cover a Capcom all rights reserved. <laughs> now that's the real scoring gag. All rights reserved. <laughs> uh, 1942. Admittedly, I did not think I would have nearly as much fun as I did as as the amount of cumulative fun i've had by the end of this time but you know what i'd say i've had a satisfactory amount of fun and i would give this game a satisfactory score out of 10 well i'm feeling pretty accomplished pretty satisfied so on that note this cat's got a scat